So in this lesson we're going to look at configuring Exchange Server 2010 to send outgoing mail from your Exchange organization uh, out to other domains on the internet. So what I've got here is a, uh, a Windows 7 computer with Office 2010 installed and I've just logged on with my administrator account because once again that's the only mailbox that I've got in my organization at the moment. And you can see here in the mailbox that testexchangeconnectivity.com uh, test email that was sent in the previous lesson sitting there in the mailbox. So I'll just get rid of that. And what I'm going to do to demonstrate uh, outgoing mail flow is send an email to uh, my Gmail address. So test outgoing email test and we'll just send that off now. And it goes through the outbox and it disappears so as far as Outlook is concerned that has been sent. So here is that Gmail account exchange server pro dot, uh, at gmail.com and so far nothing's been received. So let's go and have a look on the exchange server itself and see what might be happening to that email. In the exchange uh, management console down the bottom here we've got this toolbox section so I'll open that up and the tool that I want to take a look at is the queue viewer and this is going to let me know what mail is actually queued on the exchange server at the time. So I just double click to open that. And it'll take a few moments to open. And what I can see here is that there is a queue known as unreachable domain and it has a message count of one. So let's have a closer look at the messages in that queue and the message was sent from administrator at exchangebootcamp.com sent to exchange server pro at gmail.com and it has an error at the moment that says a matching connector cannot be found to route the external recipient so your exchange organization needs to have a route to send any email to uh, external recipients or other domains. It doesn't have those routes configured by default. So I'll clear that out and I'll show you where you can configure those routes. Now, the routes uh, in Exchange 2010 organization for sending outside the organization are configured here in this organization configuration uh, section under hub transport and they are called send connectors. Now by default there are no send connectors configured in your Exchange 2010 organization. If you've upgraded from a previous version of Exchange uh, you may see some send connectors here from those legacy versions but if you're installing a fresh Exchange Server 2010 organization there will be no send connectors configured. So we need to go ahead and create one of those now and you can do that from over here in the actions pane by clicking on new send connector or right click. Now I'm going to call my send connector internet email and here where it says select the intended use for this send connector I'm just going to choose internet and these ones as it says here in the description are for send connectors that are used to send emails to the internet this connector will be configured to use DNS MX records to route email. Click next. Now you have an opportunity here to uh, configure specific send connectors for specific uh, domains that you are sending to. So that would be useful in a scenario where you want to route mail out of your organization to a particular domain and have it go uh, specifically to uh, another IP address out on the internet irrespective of what uh, records exist in DNS. Um, but for general outgoing email you'll just want to configure an address space of uh, asterisks, in other words wildcard with a cost of uh, one that's fine at the moment and here we have the option to uh, use the domain name system uh, in other words it will look up the EMX records to choose where to route that mail or to specify a smart host. Now if you're doing this uh, from your home internet connection you may find that your internet service provider doesn't allow you to send outgoing SMTP uh, to anywhere else on the internet 
they may actually require that you route mail through a smart host that they provide. That's not unusual at all. So if that's the case, just look that uh, information up on your ISP's uh, support web pages and it should have a, a DNS name or an IP address that you can configure here as a smart host. So either the IP address or the fully qualified domain name. Uh, however, if you uh, have no such restrictions on your internet service provider, you can just uh, allow your exchange server to look up MX records of those recipient domains and send the mail directly. Just be aware that, uh, if, again, if you are doing this from your home internet connection, uh, sometimes the IP address, um, IP addresses for uh, subnets that ISPs assign to their uh, uh, residential customers have problems sending mail because uh, they are filtered or they exist on block lists from some of the uh, email and any spam providers out there. Um, so you may have some delivery problems sending from your home exchange server. But since this is a, a just a training lab type environment, that's probably not going to be too much of an issue for you. Um, and in this scenario, I'm going to assume that uh, my IP address is not going to have any problems just sending to that Gmail account that I'm trying to use for this test. So I'll just leave one set to DNS and click Next. The source server for a SEND connector is the hub transport server that will um, be responsible for actually sending the mail out to the internet. So if you have an organization with multiple hub transport servers, you can limit which ones of those actually make those outbound connections. And of course in this training lab environment we only have the one server and that's the one that's been pre-populated here in the wizard. So go ahead and click Next. That's all the information we need for the send connector. Click on new and that is now complete. So now we have this send connector called internet email configured to just use DNS uh, to look up MX records and send mail to external recipients. And of course your exchange server will need outbound firewall access on that TCP port 25 for SMTP as well. So now that that's in place, let's go back into the queue viewer and have a look at what's going on there. And I'll just refresh this view. As you can see, my unreachable domains queue has disappeared and that message is now gone. So, did it make it? Here it is here in the Gmail account from administrator, test outgoing email. And that was received successfully. We can now reply to that mail. And because we've already previously configured all the requirements for incoming mail into the organization, we should see it pop up here in Outlook in just a few seconds. There it is. Now one last thing that you can do to verify uh, that your mail is routing over the, uh, through the servers that you intended to is to analyze the message headers. So for this email that we received, we'll just go ahead and open it up and just click on that little tags arrow there and what that gives us access to is the full internet headers of the message so I'm just going to go ahead and grab all those and put them into notepad these message headers uh, can be a little bit difficult to interpret but basically they tell us which uh, IP addresses and servers that the mail traveled through to get from the sender to the destination and there's some tools out there that help you read these in a little bit more uh, user-friendly format. So let's have a look at one of those now. We'll just go to mxtoolbox.com. And MX Toolbox has uh, this Analyze Headers tool here. So I'll just go ahead and paste all that information in. Click on the button. and it gives us uh, a little bit more uh, readable breakdown of those message headers. So we can see that HOP1 uh, was these IP addresses here, presumably they belong to uh, Gmail servers and I was connecting over HTTP when I actually sent the mail. Then they make their first SMTP connection to this server, another SMTP connection and eventually the last hop is this uh, mail-wi0-google.com uh, address that connects to my Exchange 2010 server. So you can use this MX Toolbox tool uh, to analyze your headers and just get a better understanding of which uh, IP addresses and mail servers your mail is going through.